Choral Festival celebrations. Well, it was coming to the end of the gift sharing adventure on the Taking by Club Foire, which aims at fostering networking, but not without the group visiting the Care for Babies. It was completely different mood, as most of these women and mothers could not hold back their tears upon seeing these toddlers who never experienced the love of a biological mother as they were dumped at such vulnerable and tender days of their lives. The shelter manager informed the group that in 2013 alone, the shelter received 29 dumb babies, something he described as alarming. So you can see it is something very alarming. But though we, we are trying our best to see that, you know, they are care and protection is also being taken up. But on behalf of my director of social welfare, we are saying a very big thank you. It will serve for the interest of the children. It was touching when the group learned of the news of a new West dumb baby to the center who was only three days old. It was there that Fatuma Tejahun Pasise initiated the move for the baby be named after the Deputy Speaker Fatumbai, who welcomed the idea, permitting to henceforth take up the responsibility of giving the child a new lease of life. I would like to congratulate the staff and also the Director of Social Welfare under whose purview this center is. I know she has a passion for what she does especially for, for babies and children. That, that is her number one passion. So I want to congratulate her for all the hard work she's putting into this center. Aji Awakan, a member of the Club Foire, assured the center of their support, saying as mothers, they are moved by the situation and thus will do their quota to assist in the shelter. As the club wrap up the day's activity, the state broadcaster sounded the views of one member of Club Foire, Marie Jabati Juf, on the baby dumping minis. Marie Bimon on what she described as a cruelty on the side of the mothers in dumping their babies after nine months of pregnancy. She called on the authorities to help in coping the ugly scenario whilst appealing to the women to cease in doing such an act, urging them to rather give out their babies to childless couples or better still, give them away honorably rather than dumping them. I said to Bajan Sar, GRTS. Education Research Center and Technology Tuesday validated the Tertiary and Higher Education Act 2014. The document, as Fatu Janembai tells us, now serves as the working tool for the Higher Education Ministry in its all-out effort to widen the accessibility of high-quality and relevant tertiary education system in the Gambia. Of higher education, research, science, and technology with stakeholders recently adopted the Higher Education Act 2014. The exercise took place after several working sessions on the draft document for the establishment, registration, and accreditation of tertiary and higher education institutions. The Act set its sight on establishing and developing a system governing tertiary and higher education in the Gambia for the purpose of widening the accessibility of high quality standards and relevant tertiary and higher education. This draft document covers the establishment and operation of public universities and private universities and tertiary institutions in the Gambia. It is important to note that this act seeks to provide the legal basis for the operation of the sector and not in any way interfering with the academic freedom and core mandate of tertiary and higher education institutions in the Gambia. That is very important to take note of. The Higher Education Ministry intends to apply the Act for the realization of national development programs. The Higher Education Act 2014 is designed to meet both the demand and quality in higher education vis-à-vis -vis education related MDGs. The Ministry is also poised to achieve this target given the importance in sustainable national growth. To refer the disclosed Higher Education Act 2014 has been domesticated to suit the needs of the people. It is also important to note that MOHAS, the Ministry of Higher Education, is cognizant of the critical and multidimensional nature of the various issues contained in this draft document. And consequently, stakeholders from different sectors have been invited to exchange ideas, not only ideas but knowledge, in order to make the document legally acceptable socially responsive and culturally friendly.
For Yusufa Toure, the Director of Planning and Research, Ministry of Higher Education, tertiary and secondary education is taking center stage in the national development process, which is evident in the growing number of private institutions in the country. Two people credited for their contribution in the formulation and the adoption of the Higher Education Act 2014 are Kani Toure and Katusavi Tom from the Ministry of Justice. This act, I will precisely say, is divided into Maybe let me call it four major, uh, major parts. Mm -hmm. There are so many parts, but the major items in this act. We, so by this act, as you see, we are trying to establish the Accreditation and Quality Assurance Authority <coughs> to govern the whole uh, higher education and tertiary. It's the heart of what we are trying to do. The validation of the Higher Education Act 2014 is regarded as a giant leap by the Higher Education Ministry in its all-out efforts to actualize its institutional goals of achieving quality education in the Gambia. Reporting for GRTS News, I am Fatu Janimbay. As part of the quest to meet the needs of their electorate, boost economic growth and alleviate rural poverty, the National Assembly Select Committee on Government Projects has embarked on a two-day tour of the Soma Mandinaba and the Brikama Dasila Medimbaya Road projects. Ababgar Kamara went along and he prepared this report. Inspection exercise covering a 149-kilometer road network stretching from Kayaf to Mandinaba along the southern bank of River Gambia. Uh, the Select Committee on uh, Monitoring of Government Projects Embark on this tour to Ndemban here purposely to see for ourselves complaints from the various villages following the construction of the Soma Road. We have been told by MPs and their electorates that uh, some culverts and drainage systems are such that. Uh, compounds around the road get flooded because for whatever reasons water is not flowing properly there are blockages here and there um, the, the issue is the road stretches from Mandinaba to Soma which is about 140 um, kilometers and then the, most of the issues um, discussed with the MPs uh, a lot, almost 90 or 94 percent of them is has to do with drainage works the NCWIN monitoring exercise has attracted divergent views from both deputies and beneficiary villages Considering some remarkable shortfalls on factor during the project designing stages, this in no small measure has been neglected by the monitoring team. So you see this area, um, it's, a, it's a place designed by the Wimpy in the 1960s, where water collects here, but there's a culvert here, which is now blocked. And as a result, water from the eastern side of the village uh, packs here, and uh, these compounds get flooded. You can even imagine that they, they, they dug a trench here to allow water to flow, flow out. Now the effect of this is uh, uh, causes uh, their houses, their structures to fall down. And uh, you know, as a poor community, they have no peop nobody to assist them. So this go happens annually. Some other places we found out that there is erosion on even against the highway like uh, in Garol, but we thank God they have, they have done that place well. Some other places water is not flowing out, there are blockages because, uh, because either the culverts are blocked or no culverts at all, and therefore the low-lying compounds are flooded. Some other places you have the, the drainage system itself, it's not properly Some places are narrow, some is not non-existent. We, we discussed it so that it can be expanded. The road which is expected to finish in 2014 has been hampered by inadequate financial resources with constant rise in materials required for its construction. However, its completion will enhance economic activities and improve rural poverty. Babukar Kamara, GRTS. And now to take our first break, we'll be back with news from outside the Gambia. <coughs> Mbadi ngul, nyine nkibaro di bangu ubeka mbadunu. 
Jaliba ko yade anin ko mare ban ito le beñi tande kan jama be na ko Jaliba la album kuta fulon ni alon ko e ka fole woli sabo anin alin tuje e pare tale ali pare ta ka kulli adun kulli be kala ku bale ti banko kan ja abe kulli la mento ma le sibitilu moteri na january karo ko no na sankuto min kana ten tuta 